everybody. Hey, hey guys, welcome to Quarantine with Kim. I have the amazing Morgana here. Morgana, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Thank you for having me. And you have a tea or a coffee? I do. Oh. A chamomile. You know, I yesterday did my very first, well, you don't know this, um, very first tea lesson from a tea finale or sommelier. Uh -huh, yeah. You know how oh, they have familiar. Familiar. The word with all the letters that's actually pronounced like less letters. <laughs> um, oh wow. How did yeah. it go? It went really good. So I watched the there was a documentary about a wine sommelier who like, you know, they can sniff and sm taste a wine and they're like, mm, the Bordeaux mm. region feels like a full body. Must have been I don't know, 2014, the year of the drought, that kind of chaos. And this lady does it, but with tea. And so as some weird lockdown activity, my family and I spent an hour learning how to do tea properly. So that was fun. Oh, what were you getting wrong? What am I getting wrong? Can you well, teach me in 20 seconds? So uh, yes, the key things were that I've never looked at, and I don't know if you have, on the back of a packet, it should actually say what temperature the hot water should be and for how long you should keep a bag in for. Okay. And usually with like herbal teas, you're not supposed to put boiling water. You're supposed to let it like settle and all this other kind of mumbo jumbo. I've immediately got it wrong. Immediately. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> My dad was so sweet. He had notes. Gordon. He's like, okay, yep, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> hiding it cool, cool cool yeah no we always yeah, yeah. do that. okay totally yeah i felt i felt that i felt that um, um okay so anyway so starts with like, read the instructions <laughs> yes we were like that seems yes okay interesting interesting right yeah mm. Good. okay sure okay sure <laughs> sure sure yeah um how was lockdown 2.0 for you it was a different vibe, eh, second time round. There was a lot of things. We had like a lot of momentum in our lives just before it all came to a screeching halt. Okay. Which there, I think, are a lot of metaphors and like life lessons just in that, isn't there? Oh, God, I don't think I've actually ever experienced anything quite like that, though, where everything was just like, I think literally like a few days before lockdown, I'm going to saying to Pete, my husband being like, I'm really proud of us, you know, we're really going for it, really, really hustling. And then everything just absolutely like, like it got pulled out from under us. And so I understand that there is, and then of course, I think there's been a politically and socially a little bit more of a kickback against it, which is a little distressing. And like, I get it. It's really annoying. Mm. I still haven't quite heard a better option but um mm, but yeah so it was a little bit uh, but then after I got over all my initial disappointments it was actually quite nice to just have to yeah. oh I just have to stay home I just have to be with the kids and there is something kind of nice about just having to be like fucking present mm -hmm. oh that, that sounds like deep fucking present man just be present man no I are you are you good at that? Because I, I I have both depression and anxiety. So I'm either <laughs> regretting the past and in my depression, or I'm in the future with my anxiety and I'm really re rarely unless there's a camera rolling, which is why I unfortunately have an addiction to what we're doing as a career. Of course, it just unless, brings everything. Unless or like this as an example. Um if I'm not doing this, where I am 100% present, I am one of two, yeah, living in one the... One of two, you're, you're stuck in a time warp. Yeah. Pull, tug, and pull, tug of war. Um, mm. I think it's, it, it actually lockdown helps with that because it takes all the options off the table. Mm -hmm. And I think there is that wonderful quote, that Kierkegaard quote, which is, anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. And having sometimes having so many options is overwhelming. And not to be like, oh, what was me? Well, me, my first world fucking white middle class lifestyle is so hard. But there is something to be said about having like a lot available to you and going. Uh, and I think that gives me a little bit of anxiety. And so to have it all taken off the table and go, okay, well, who are you? Just there as an artist, who are you? As a parent, who are you? 
um, it's nice. It is nice. It I mean, it'd be nice if a global pandemic didn't swirl all around yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, there is a, yeah, certain elements. Although I, I found, and I don't know if you relate to this, like, I used to hang my hat on the fact that I don't compare myself to others, that I'm just in competition with myself. And not, yeah. It, and I was like, that's me. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not competitive. I don't care what other people are doing. I'm racing my own race. And like really, I guess, fantasize that uh, or romanticize that analogy that that was what I was. And it wasn't until the lockdown when it, it was a great equalizer. No one else was working. And I felt this immense peace. And it was a humbling realization to realize like, oh, I do obviously. Oh, I'm not yeah worry about you know oh everyone else is working I'll never work you know when it, yeah, so. and that's a whole nother thing I like I've thought about this in recent years because I think I've come to a different way of thinking about our mad industry mm -hmm. but that there is a real and I this probably actually exists across the other industries but I just don't know um there's an illusion of competition for one like I think which is not real, especially if you've had any, any inkling or look at casting from the other side of things. Like you don't get, if you're the best person, you don't get it. Like there's no such thing. Like there's so many things at play. But then also there's that, um, there's that wonderful thing that humans love to do, which is compact and notate time. And there's this idea of finish lines constantly even like in the language that we use like oh she's made it like made what made it? there's no end there's no like again I'm not I'm just running next to you but we're not aiming for anywhere it's all ebbs and flows you know and so I it's just an interesting little these things that we put on ourselves and so when they're all taken away as well for the sense of time except that you might go, oh, we're out of lockdown on Friday, you know, so you've got yeah. that kind of this trajectory. But really, it's just still such a subjective mush of human interdependency. Yeah, that's a really, that feels like a really healthy way to look at it, though. I, I definitely, as a huge source of uh, my stress and anxiety, um, was was this screen with this time and timeline in the corner of like, oh, I need to get to that point. And usually it was based around like finances or like going to America and like knowing how long I could stay there based on that certain amount of right, money. Right, and like, right. oh, I need the job by this point or what? Well, you're like, oh, I'm like, I'm 28. I'm nearly in my 30s. Or like, oh, now I'm in my 30s. I need to get these things done because it's my 30s or 40. Yeah. You know, like, I'm sure it's going to just keep going. But it really, it, it isn't actually real. No. So how, yeah. So talk me through. <laughs> This is now just my therapy, but that's okay. Oh, wow. it's my um, so how did you, how do you marry that into a healthier relationship? Because I feel like, you know, awareness is stage one. And so I'm getting used to that. Right. And then kind of that letting go, there's still like some resistance there, which is. I think yeah. it's just, it's that constant back and forth. There was a little moment um, a couple of years ago, I got really into listening to the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack again. Oh, and there's that great, great song, the sun. I mean, come on. Um, and there's that wear sunscreen song, you know, and it's like the speech. <gasps> this is my favorite song. It's so good. And it's actually so good to listen to when you're having a bit of a rough patch because there is that yeah. line in it. And I'm even going to get the line wrong, but it's something like sometimes you're ahead and sometimes you're behind. You're behind. Like you're just going to do it. It's right. only with yourself. It's it's just always, so it's coming back and forth. And then I worked with this actress um, a few years ago called Alison White, and she's glorious. And we were talking about this. And she told me a story of when she did one of her first jobs with an actor who was quite well known, and she was quite starstruck by him. And she was like, I think she said to him one day, like, so are you famous? And he said something like, sometimes, darling, sometimes. And that is it, right? I mean, it ah. just sort of comes in and out. Like, I don't know if... That's the surrender in it. Is yeah. Like sometimes you're behind and sometimes you're ahead and sometimes you're famous and sometimes you're not. Yeah. And that's okay. That's, you've given me a real gift. I, I went through a period of life where I would listen to that regularly. It helped it, in, in a weird, I mean, it's full of great advice, but it was like the, actually the lines about your parents um, that I think that section was really um, in, yes. 
informative for me at that time, like get to know your parents kind of situation. Yes. And it was like, it must be like, I feel like you need to check in with that song every few years and your yeah. different part will ring true for you. Yeah. And apparently it's written by a woman. It was written by this, I think a lawyer. I got really into like reading up about it because even though the voice is done by a guy, it was written by a woman in like Chicago or something. I probably got that completely wrong, but that's fine. Well, we don't have a fact check, but someone else, someone will come at us if we got it wrong. Don't you worry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, that's that's given me a real gift. I'm really excited to listen to that song today. You're right. I'm curious of what else will pop out from it. Um, So you made this amazing show. I have been because um, of my immense privilege of working with Neon and Sky, been able to watch two episodes of it. Okay, great. And I loved it. I Did want you? more because um, it's kind of right at, and I, don't worry everyone, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but right at this point of me going like, well, what's going on? And it's sweet. And like, is it going to get really dark? Is it going to get confusing? What's happening? Like, um, which is just so rad. And also, yeah, just fangirling over you guys and so many cool people in that. I, I recently worked with Sam Sneddon and just think he's a bloody gem um but not everyone spent lockdown number one writing creating shows that are going to be on the telly so maybe you could uh yeah I see you speak to that experience of how that even happened and yeah yeah well it's funny so um the writers uh or the creative team luminous beast is my husband peter salmon um my not husband Diane musgrove and my not wife shoshana mccallum the three of them have this company. And so I think they, and they had just started, they decided to do this. And then okay. at the because start of, of lockdown, because I guess no, it's. No, they had decided to make this company, um, okay. which is awesome because I think, and I think the three of them kind of making this pack together to be proactive and be aggressive. And I, I love that when Pete was telling me about it because he was like saying the three of them don't necessarily feel like particularly aggressive people, but that they working together it's allowing them to be aggressive and like make 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 which i just think is a fucking ticket and um then lockdown happened first one and uh new zealand on air put out a call for rapid response funding and they just jimmied up this pitch for the show and um found a broadcaster they got prime Mm -hmm. and then um and that was quite intense. So there, so this is in lockdown. So they're in the other room writing while I am playing with children for hours. <laughs> so just like, no, 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 don't go in there. Don't go in. Come here, come here, come here, come here. And like, um, and then I do remember there was a moment, like not to sound ungrateful, but like after the pitch had been put through and I, great. Okay, well, then we've got a bit of a rest. And then Pete and I are sitting together and going, holy shit, like if you guys get the money, so then, of course, they were like, you know, you're playing the lead because I didn't have any other actors to compete against That's for the great. role. Perfect. Snipped as so. alive as well. And he's, <laughs> Peter's like, so yeah, I've like, actually got a few people in mind, um, but we'll... I know. Yeah. I was yeah. like, what do I... Do I rather, like, doing an audition and, like, getting it on what I assume to be in my own merits, which, of course, is an illusion and not actually real and it's all dependent on all these different factors, or do I... Would I rather just have it given to me because there's nobody else <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, the, I don't mind either way, um, is the answer. And um, yeah, then he was like, oh shit, like if we get this money, if we're going to have to make this show, like how are we going to do this? Because we've got these two kids. Oh my God. And because um, it was initially designed to be able to shoot in lockdown level four, mm-hmm. in which case it would have been Pete shooting me um, with a camera, mm-hmm. nothing else. And um, and we kind of thought we're going to have to like shoot all night. We're going to have to shoot because the kids, we don't, we can't, there's no childcare. Like we can't do that stuff. Mm-hmm. But then luckily, so then the money came through. We're like, okay, let's make a show. <laughs> and again, it was them writing in another room on Skype, on Zoom while I um, fielded the kids, which was, had its nice moments. Um, and then like watched, patiently as the cases went down so that level two on the first day of level two we were able to start shooting which we were going please because it meant that we could get childcare, so we could take the kids to my parents 
um, and we could go and a friend's house. We shared them between the two places. And it also meant we could have Dave Cameron shoot it, come into the house. I love and, him. Oh, nicest man in the business. I had such a crush on him at Shelton Street, DC. Oh, fair enough. He's and I know he has a lovely wife and all of that. I was never in a promo. I just remember being like... <sighs> <laughs> and I feel I, like you're allowed to have crushes on married men. That's okay. Is yeah, it? but it, would, it was it was one of those paralyzing crushes that I oh, wasn't no. too familiar oh. with at the time. Like I was one of the youngest cast members of Shorten Street, and he would be like, "Hey Kim," and I'd be like, "I'm fine, thanks." And just <gasps> everyone in the cast would just give me absolute shit because it was just obviously so blindingly obvious to everyone that I just like wanted to hang and be cool. Oh, and- this. So cute. But this says such nice things about you, Kim. It means oh. you're really attracted to like the loveliest men in the world. Because oh, okay. like, he's right. the sort of guy as well that if he knew that, he would have just tried to make your life so much nicer. It would have never, you know, there's a certain kind of guy that could have used it against you and just made it oh, awful. Totally. totally. Oh. And it was more that everyone else is giving me assholes that probably upped my anxiety at, oh, some, totally. at some level. But it was... I think it was, you know, I'd been on Shirley Street for like a year or something. So at that point, I was like, I'm the greatest human that's walked the earth. <laughs> like, you know, filled, yeah. filled with my own, I don't know, ego, I guess. And then would just <laughs> have the rug pulled out from under me if he was in a room with me. It was the funniest Ooh, thing. Classic crush. That's a good crush situation. <laughs> Go really all gooey. Um, well, yes, I can totally relate. In fact, my daughter Luna, I think, is the same. Has, she's five and is, loves DC. Because we have to try and get them out of the house by 7.30 and DC would be, would show up. DC, and sometimes if we were on our way out the door, we'd have to wind the window down. Hi, DC. Hi, DC. Hi. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a pony, I got a unicorn tour, you know. And he was so sweet. Really, Luna? That's so cool. She's like, oh, DC. Like, well, me I get Luna it. and I can, we can share tales later in life. <laughs> with our immense crushes. Oh, okay, okay. So he was able to... Debrief, for sure. (laughs) So he was able to come over and shoot, and then did Mm. it all run smoothly? Ish? Yeah, actually, it did. It was actually totally smooth. Like, um, I don't think we had to face too much. He was a wizard with, like... And what I think is beautiful is that he didn't really... I think I saw him use one light, one actual light, and then everything Mm. else he just did... With um, with basically molding light from the mm. natural sunlight and using antifill. I learned about antifill. Ooh! He just rigged this room, which is our spare room, beautifully, so that he could just like flop down a thing of blacks, which would give some antifill, and then you know a flecky here. And then because it was such a small crew, like most of the time it was just DC and Pete and I in the room with um, a friend like Dave Van Horn came a lot or Dan or Shosh or Shosh partner Mikey as a reader for what I was supposed to be seeing on the computer but wasn't seeing. Um, And so it was a really like intimate, lovely little space. Yeah. And then we did a couple of moments of shooting outside and then there's some really great moments where from in front of the camera looking at the crew which was this mo- mostly actors like and it just made me giggle like Dan Musgrove holding a flicky board Dave Van Horn holding a boom and it's like, like, like actors doing yeah. everything and it's like it's like back to like almost 40 hour film 48 hour kind yeah. of like styles like we've got this money we got yeah yeah that's so that's so cool that feels yeah, like gonna make a it. little um like family, where everyone's kind of invested and just making great yes. quality stuff without all and of the everyone, stuff. yeah, and everyone is also really experienced. So even though you're sort of working in a student for, film format, hmm. everybody who is involved is like really good at what they do. So you know, like Pete, it was really nice to work with Pete as a director because we've hmm. never really worked that way. I did a time. Yeah, I, was, I was wondering that. Like, um, I often will like read lines with my partner in the States or my mother. And it's a great, it's it's really difficult to take like suggestions from my mum. She's gonna read you're not gonna read it like that, are you? And I'm like, I'm just running like, please don't um give me feedback. Um so I was yeah, curious. Oh, no, the internet like, is going so mental. Can you oh, hear no, me? Sorry. I can hear you. 
Can you not hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. What I what I was going to say was just how yes. how is that dynamic of working with a partner and I guess in being directed by a partner? Well, I know I thought I guess I was a little bit worried because it is the person that you are probably more you feel more comfortable to be a bit like sassy with. <laughs> but um <laughs> but we worked really awesome together which was great like really efficient and I mean I I think you you know as an actor working with a director getting direction I think I have come to find is just always awkward it's always a little bit there's something there's a filter that's got to go through there's you've got to be able to understand it and whether you're receiving it with like full like yes totally great you've got to communicate that back there's just it's a very little nuanced dynamic thing and especially when you're doing screen like the direction has to be so concise and clear and prescriptive just to the right way you know sometimes there's a difference between you know, when a director tries to give you a, an intention-based direction and then you're like, oh, you just want me to go faster. They're like, yeah. You're like, just say faster. And then sometimes they're like, do you reckon you can go faster? And you're like, but what do you mean? Like, what am I trying to do? Like, give me an intention here, you know? <laughs> but um, he was great. And I think because we know each other really well, now, like, it's just now, now we know each other quite well. <laughs> After working together, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it was awesome. I think um, both of us are like, yay, we're getting to hang out together every day and work this way. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, to anyone who is, okay, like inside, it's got COVID as, it really is like a backdrop to a it big is. different story. Um, yeah, for, for anyone who maybe is sitting there going like, I've just done lockdown. Why would I want to show about lockdown? Again, I emphasize it's the backdrop. But just to kind of nip that in the bud, what would you, um, yeah, what would you say to anyone who's, like, who's maybe considering like, oh, sounds interesting, tell me more. What I think is so great about this show is that it is like what they're sort of like 15 minute morsels mm -hmm. and they, and it's a thriller with a couple of quirky comedic moments. But like, I feel that's really um, unique, you know, when you've got, you've just had a full day, especially like I've been in this situation so much where I've been full day with kids. Kids are finally in bed and everything. And I sit down with Pete, we want to watch something. We've finished the series. I don't have it in me to start a new series. I don't have it in me to do an hour. I don't have it in me, definitely don't have it in me to watch a movie. And I just don't really feel like watching a comedy right this minute. Like I just want something, I want a juicy morsel of 15 minutes worth of like cool, quirky thriller, offbeat thriller. Yes, please. That's what I think is really got going for it. A juicy morsel is the perfect way to describe it. In fact, if I was like New York Times or whatever, and this was a novel on the back, a juicy morsel would be the... I think that's the, wow, I love it. That's yeah, it's just a juicy morsel, which yes, is like crazy. It's crazy current. And especially because yeah. it's set in a New Zealand second wave and mm -hmm. which we initially put it in there to raise the stakes of the story to be like, okay, well, how about this for crazy? Let's make it a second wave, but it's also set in the more deadly second wave. So like we've tried to amp up the situation outside of her a little bit more. Um, but it does use it as a backdrop to talk about her anxieties and, mm. um, and, the, and the stuff that she's dealing with. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, speak to this as much or as little as, as you want to. There's definitely some OCD tendencies that I picked up from the first um, episode with the character and that idea of anxieties. Is that anything that you, Morgana, have uh, had any experience with? No, not no, not that deep. I think, okay. and like in terms of dealing with that within the character, um, I think definitely coming at it from an angle of um, her experience in her life. Um, and I guess because, you know, at the moment we're all very articulate about talking about men mental illness, which is marvellous. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to... Uh, come at it from that angle too much because I don't have enough experience. Although I have to say like when COVID all started, I was like, I think this is giving me a really good insight onto having a little bit of an anxiety disorder because there is yeah. low hum, low hum. Yeah. But um, her, her stuff is definitely around her 
her anxiety stems from her upbringing and she's mm. carrying a lot of grief and stuff like that. So mm. yeah, yes, I won't, I won't go full. Like we're, we're doing, we're doing mental health, but it definitely is working. But there's a lot that. of yeah elements that play into it. And even people who maybe don't suffer with depression or anxiety, I feel like COVID has been, Yes, right. Well, like a bit it brings of a out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what so- I like about her character is that what I think is interesting is that she is somebody who before COVID is a recluse anyway and finds people really difficult. And it's through being made to be reclusive um, with lockdown that she has had to find her or reignite her need for human connection. Mm. I like that. I like that too. There was a stand-up I watched where someone was like, anyone with anxiety in 2020, it's like, this is what we've been preparing for. Like, it's like, <laughs> she's like it's our Olympics. It's our time to shine. Like, we've already worried about everything. And I was like, oh, that's so brilliant. Sorry, oh my God, look at that puppy. I know, I've got two of them here. Um, <gasps> that's, well, not two puppies. That was Rosie, the dog, and that uh, dog. And then that is Honey, the puppy. She is time oh to sleep. I love being a puppy. Um, I want to play this quick game with you. Okay. Um, and I realize I've taken a bit more of your time, so I'll make it very quick and quick fire. Yeah. It's just our um, way to get to know you a little bit better. There's okay. no real points involved or anything, but here we go. Okay. Um, a food you hate? Um, sour lollies. Oh, why? Just salivating's not nice here. I'm like a snail. Like you put salt on me with everything else. I like you asked it. Noted. Okay. <laughs> the worst smell in the world is uh, teeth plaque. Teeth. You know, like yeah, like gross teeth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. 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 Your most worn clothing item is. Ooh. Ooh. Um like a floral dress i feel like i buy over and over i'm like pete do you like my new dress he's like you've had have you not had that have we not had that for years <laughs> <laughs> um and alcohol that you can't go near probably because of a bad experience mm, tequila makes me do things that i think is cool at the time but not cool and but you but can maybe still that's only, maybe that's just cheap tequila maybe if i amped it up a little notch maybe i could ease my way back in there and is it because of like a bad chundering experience or just more of like the behavior that results in this version okay yeah oh i've chundered it all and okay. i and i've gone back we do you cry to... when you throw up do i cry yeah no and actually i'm a really quiet puker because actually in my family they're loud pukers as my dad says they call for ralph um and i don't <laughs> yeah I just um, just quietly go and have a little cough. <laughs> in, uh, I find a, I'm like a dog dying on their own. I need to go away. Yes. Well, you Be definitely alone. don't want near you. That's no, right. sir, right. No, it's the behavior that I have done. Oh, I guess it's as a teenager, actually, with tequila. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sort of a long time ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> in the not too distant past. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's- that's good to know. Okay, tequila. Um, now, I know that you're in a very happy relationship and we've talked about your partner, but in an alternative universe, if you could go on a hot date with a TV character, not the actor, but the oh, character oh. from a show, who would that be? Oh, maybe um, maybe Donald Glover's character from Atlanta. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Noted, noted. Or Jamie um, Oliver. <laughs> can he be a character? Oh, he can be. Oh, I reckon that's a really good one. That's a Jamie Oliver. I like that. Um, <laughs> do you wash your feet? No. Me like, why? I feel like they get the runoff. Thank you. Yes. So we had this discussion recently. My mother put like one of those scrubbing brush things into my shower. And I was like, mm, why? Like, <laughs> oh, and she like wash your feet. And I was like, mm, never have I washed my feet with intention. Like, they right. get washed as a byproduct of a shower. And she just thought I was the most grossest rank human. And so you're like, been. now I'm gonna ask everybody. Only because it helps my narrative of me feeling less like a <laughs> um, 
What is something that you learned about yourself in lockdown 2.0? Um, I think it was that thing of stripping away all the options all the options because like um like yourself like we go up to la every year we have an, a relationship with australia and here and it all feels very cool like yeah we just want to be try and be like global career you know but then take that away and go um okay who am i as an artist like really what do you what do you like mm -hmm. i think that's what i got to face and i liked that and also that i don't always have to try and get the kids out of the house I have to just stay home and hang out with them because mm -hmm. I'm doing that for me, not them. Yep. They just want to hang out with me. They do. I'm sure they do. You're great. Um, and I want to do a couple of local things. If you, if there was like a place in New Zealand that you're like, oh, at level two or level one when we get there, what is that spot that you're like, mm, favorite New Zealand little spot? Or like for snacks? For it could food? be snacks or just food. Yeah, whatever it means for you. So mine is like the top of the mountain at Pawanui because it's just like oh, really special. I like it. Beautiful. Well, I think, I mean, the Coromandel is always just my favorite place in the whole world, always. We go to Waihi Beaches. We've got a little quaint little batch down there. But then actually, I was talking to my daughter, Luna, we've been doing in this lockdown, which has been really nice. Every Sunday we come to my parents' house and we have, um, because they're in our bubble, and we have dinner and then we have a bath because they've also got a bath and we don't have a bath. And I just, well, me and the kids are big bath pe people. Yeah. And it's such a nice place for us to like hang out. My daughter was born in the bath. I feel like, <laughs> um, and but then I was telling her about hot water beach. I'm like, Luna, there is this place, it's a beach. But this is called Hot Water Beach, and you can dig down for hot water. And she's like, "What? We gotta go there!" I'm like, "I oh, know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go there. Oh, yeah, that's such a great idea. Yeah, that is quite my. Yeah, I guess we like that exists. But if you didn't know that, you're like, and I wonder how if, are we not all there all the time? I wonder if her expectation versus reality will be what she's imagining. I know, right? Like, I do remember actually thinking that Hot Water Beach meant the water was hot. But yes. then, so I very, I was actually really clear about you have to dig. Yeah. yeah. But then, hey, <laughs> sandy bath. Um, and is there um, a spot that you guys ordered like to go from or click and collect or any local cafe or anything that you're like, oh, yes, love it. Oh, well, I mean, we moved into our house, which is where we've shot inside on the first day of lockdown one. We made it, we, 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 Moved back from Australia, mm -hmm. from Melbourne specifically, which is just, I, <laughs> oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then we um, got a new house and we moved in just in time for lockdown, which was kind of like, oh no, because we're just near the village um, yep. in Sarandjinga there, which is just obviously filled with amazing um, Indian delights. And so we yeah. have been, as soon as it ticked into level three, watch out yeah. we enjoy a lot of places down there <laughs> but the malai kofta from paradise is like oh my god <laughs> yeah. oh i have to try it okay Recommend. all right that's good to know i'm into it um i like to end my show with a bit of a cheers um and i'll do mine first and yours doesn't need to be reciprocated the idea is that you pick someone um that you think deserves a shout out from everyone watching this, they can raise a, a glass in unison, whether it's wine, tea, vodka, tequila, whatever anyone's drinking. Um, and yeah, we acknowledge them. So I'll go first. My cheers is going to obviously be to you. I am, I was really nervous about today. I'm a real fan of yours. I love your work on Mean Girls. Oh, and yours. Yours. Mean Mums and, um, yeah. and just, yeah, and just anyone, I uh, haven't been fortunate enough to kind of cross your path in a working relationship at any great extent yet, but hopefully I do because That's everyone great. speaks such volumes of you and it's it's really cool. I think New Zealanders, we're not like great at complimenting each other and yet when like you hear repeatedly such nice things about someone, it's, um, I hope you know that that's how, that's how everyone that's talks good. about you. But also, oh, that's good. Just your body of work is really inspiring and I feel like you've done and taken part in so many different cool things and just watching Insight, it, it was such a cool show to watch knowing how you guys had made it happen and 
the quality of the show isn't compromised in any way. You have amazing actors, like the storyline is really cool. It's shot beautifully. And that it would be a show on its own and stand among all the great shows out there without the fact that you did it on probably Yay. the scent of an oily rag and under such crazy circumstances. So yeah, just like full credit to you for obviously carrying the show and just being an awesome person. So a cheers to you. Cheers, it's so lovely. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Go, skull it. <laughs> well, um, I mean, same. Like, as soon as they were like, do you want to do an interview with Kim Crossman? I was like, yes. Oh, I've been wanting to chat with you forever. So, thank you. Um, um, do you like to do your chest? Well, I mean, I think it's probably, like, super cheesy. But, like, to our cool mom, Jacinda, and our stepdaddy, Ashley, I, I would do a cheers. Yeah. because whether like you're down for them or not actually I think that they have faced all this with such grace and calm mm -hmm. um which is uh, not the general rule of leadership in the world at the moment yeah. and um they have made a note especially in this second situation to nip in the bud any kind of um petty uh racial pointing that people want to do you know in the face of their own inconvenience people can get real shitty i all of us i know i can as well and they really have um been like good parents you know yeah. like don't pick on your brother it's not he it's not his fault that he got sick mm -hmm. it's the sickness's fault we call it the sickness <laughs> yeah. so um cheers to them yeah cheers to them Yay, thank you. That's such a well-deserved cheers. I think, I mean, Jacinda has the patience of a saint. The fact that, like... I know, she's got like a kid. I feel like, I'm like, I feel like having kids has given me a whole nother way to deal with auditioning because you get these auditions that come through and you go, oh, yeah, that'd be cool to get that. But if I don't, then it'll be like, yeah, you don't have to sort out childcare. Like, so it's this kind of like double, like, phew. Um, and I feel like I wonder if she's like that with this next election that she's like, look, I sure I'll go another term. That would be great. I really would like to do it. I think that, you know, but man, I've got this kid and I just want to hang out with her and it's been a fucking intense four years to whatever, you know, well, then that's fine. I'm just going to chill, man. I'm just going to chill so bad. Yeah, uh, she's such a legend. Yeah, I um, I, she has patience of a saint. I, people are like, oh, she speaks so patronizing. I'm like, if you listen to the like post game interviews, she has to speak like that because people are like, so are we wearing masks? I'm like, she literally just stops. <laughs> saying I know. And then I feel and like she doesn't spin off into another stuff, dimension. Yeah. <laughs> and all of this stuff is like, it's so dependent on how you, all these opinions that we have so deep inside of us. Like, I know that. I know there are people that are distrusting of the government at the moment, which I, and I, but I also am recognizing in myself that I am sort of, I am trusting it because she specifically presents to me lots of things that I just deem to be trustworthy. She, uh, the way, th the way that she talks, that she, the, her age, her gender, all these things that I sort of internally very deep down in my conditioning find present to me as trustworthy and then I, to other people there's different things that present as trustworthy to some people a donald trump presents to the, all their little nooks and crannies as trustworthy and that's just them great way of looking at it <laughs> but i'm um, also being trying to be really aware that that's these things are being presented sure. they that they're yeah. they're rubbing me up the right way in terms of my own yeah. um system and yeah yes exactly and so to not not be critical and to also yeah. just make sure i'm keeping a keen eye on it and not just blindly be like that is yeah 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 what you like doing? yeah sometimes you know like everything within reason we'll just yeah we'll keep critical watching closely yeah. Um, well, I love you. I am so excited to get more of insight in my life. And I know everyone is going to go like goo goo gaga over it and deservingly so because it is brilliant. And I'm hoping that you can maybe make more of it, but um, <laughs> hopefully don't, not with the realm of another lockdown um, inspiring <laughs> such uh, things. But um, yeah, thank you so much for taking time today. I know it took a thank little bit longer you. than it is, but I so love you. No, it's so nice to have a good, good banter with yeah. someone else, anyone. <laughs>
anyone. No, um, no, you're not just anyone, but <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Um, well, I love you dearly. Have a wonderful day and thank you so love much. Love you. Catch you soon. Okay. Sounds good. See you, babe. Bye. Bye.